Hey YouTube, what's going on? Jimmy from Making It Work. Thanks for tuning in. This video I'm going to do is some uh, brake work on a Mazda and a GM, a small GM SUV. I'm going to start off with this Mazda B2200, uh, showing you the brake rotors and the calipers are leaking fluid real bad. And so we're going to turn the rotors, repack all the bearings, new brake pads and calipers. Here I'm taking off the outer bearing uh, castle nut, and once I get that off, and what I like to do is put that castle nut back on and use it to pull the inner bearing and seal out from behind the rotor. Trick works really good. It doesn't hurt the bearing at all. Uh, you could even reuse the seal if you wanted to, but I generally replace the seals. It's a good idea so grease doesn't leak out of the back and get on the inner pad. Wipe everything down real good. Degrease the bearings. Uh, new seal. Put a little bit of grease on the new seal so it doesn't go back on there dry. It could damage the seal if you've cleaned all the grease off the spindle. Man, that's not where that goes. I got this rotor turning on this Mazda. The caliper was leaking so much brake fluid onto the rotor that that's why it's smoking. It's pretty uh, pretty cool to watch the smoke pour off of the thing as the heat from the cutting blades takes off the layer with brake fluid on it. That goes away right after the first cut. Yep, AC machine's still in the way. I guess I'll have to push it back. Can can only walk around it so many times. <laughs> ah, I feel better. My OCD is happy now. These hose clamp tools do a great job. Keep you from making a mess, and they do not hurt the hose. Sometimes you get calipers out of the box that the threads won't work. This is what come out of the thread out of the. Uh, caliper brackets. Looks like they were rebuilt without ever cleaning the threads. So sometimes you have to run a thread chaser through there to get the threads repaired. Always use a new cotter pin. push this bleeder back, push this piston back, you want to open this bleeder valve. You don't want to push the dirty brake fluid back up inside. You try to keep the bleeder valve at the top so you don't get any air inside when you're done. Pistons, pistons back, no air added. Let it gravity bleed a second so you know where all right, we're gonna turn us turn us a rotor today. Some of you guys who uh, might not have a lot of experience in the field, I'll show you guys the process of turning a rotor. Let's get into it. Got this universal mount. It does a great job of fitting all different kinds, all different sizes, screws in and out, so that you can get it on your lathe. proper spacers so that it's tight on the on the machine. Chatterman. I'll set you guys down a second while I put this on probably. Let's see what happens. Not easy with a camera in your hand. Got to back off your blades. You don't want to run your blades in. 
narrower than the size of the brake disc. I always, I always run the bit in until it just touches. That's the sweet spot. You want to take this lip off so that the when you've turned the blades in further in the middle to set your your depth when it gets to the lip it's going to jam up the machine because it'll be too much metal at one time i try to take off about four to six thousandths at a time depending on how badly the rotor's got a lip of course you have to measure the rotor and make sure it meets specifications Four thousands at a time. There you go. You do a fast cut. And that's going to take about three minutes, maybe four minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll do a slow cut, and I'll show you what it looks like. This is our uh, drum machine. We use mostly only for brake drums. It sits quite a bit. That's a flywheel machine. Where we mount a, a flywheel in this, and you set, the, you set the height with this dial. And then you can change the stones. We have all the different size stones and adapters. And then we keep our jack stands and our, our custom built press. We had to fabricate some parts when the jack went bad. A little bit of welding on there. Heavy duty monster, I'll tell you what. Put in an air pedal for activating it, and then you just release it manually, but. All right, fast cut's done. Got the whole surface pretty much. Just a little bit light right down here. So now we'll do a slow cut. The finished cut should always be slow, so you get a finer surface. Two thousandths for the last cut, which is one line. It's two thousandths. When the arm goes back, slow cut. Close to you is going to go fast, and further away is going to go slow on the on the Amco lathe. I'm going to put some uh, links in the descriptions if you guys want to help out the channel. I'm trying to grow the channel, and I'd appreciate your support. I'll put some affiliate links for some of the. Uh, the tools I use to do a brake job uh, and some of the lathe bits and things like that. If you have an Amco lathe, keeping those bits sharp uh, is really important to get a good finish. This finish, this finish has to be a certain smoothness for uh, proper brake pad seating. Just keep that in mind. A very fine cut. Done right, it almost looks like chrome. Lubricate all the contact points with the brake pads right in. And lubricate the uh, caliper piston and lubricate the contact points where the pad goes. Cleaned up the hub a little bit, put some anti seize on there so it's a little easier to get apart next time. Yeah. Brake pads, you see this red dot and a blue dot? The blue dot always goes on the outside and the red dot goes on the inside. Slightly different compounds on the brake pads. So keep that in mind when you're doing a brake job. Prop right into place. Everything's lubed up nice. It's easy. So easy a caveman can do it. This little Ingersoll ram comes in handy. Fits in a lot of places. Fits in a lot of places a regular gun would. Everything's all seated good. I put a nut on there. 
put a nut on there to hold the rotor in place while you're doing the brake pads so they don't flop around and keep falling out of the bracket. Well, thanks for watching this brake tips video, guys. Remember to like and subscribe and check the description for affiliate links that will really help out the channel. See you in the next one.